What is going on everybody? Tech enthusiast here and today I have a new retro gaming console called the Time Machine. So straight away you will notice there are 10,000 games and on the middle here you can see this is what the console and the controller looks like. On the bottom we have support for 45 consoles or systems and 30 game collections. Now at the back we can see some of the key specs. So for the CPU it is using the Amlogic S905X3 quad CPU, ARM G31 MP2 GPU, 128GB of ROM with 4GB of RAM, dual Wi-Fi, Ethernet and Bluetooth 4.0. Here is a short description of the control pad, dual vibration with 6 axes and the rest of it is in French. Anyway, let's just take a look at the contents of the box. Okay, so let's take a look at the console itself. So here you can see it, the time machine. Now at the back we have the micro SD card already plugged in. It is 128 gigabytes. This is the power input, optical audio input, headphone jack, HDMI port, Ethernet port, USB 2.0 and then USB 3.0. And on the bottom you can see there are grills to dissipate the heat if there is any. Let me just place that here. And then here is the control pad. So it feels quite snug in the hands. The buttons, D-pad, everything is quite clicky as you can hear. And it does take micro USB to charge so yeah we'll see how the control pad is later on in the video and then we have the uh, power adapter so it is two pin as it's coming from France and this is quite interesting it's got a uh, switch here so you can power it on or off there is also a USB dongle which is used to connect the controller. I forgot to show this but it is included in the box. Here is the uh, USB A to micro USB to charge the control pad and then the HDMI cable. Lastly we have the user manual but unfortunately it's all in French. And it's not really useful for non-French speaking people, which is a shame. There is a nice illustration, maybe you can make some of it out. But do bear that in mind, everything is in French. Now I'll show you the list of systems available. So we have Nintendo DS and you can see the number of games here. Final Burn Neo. MAME. Atari 2600, Atari 5200, Atari Lynx, Wonderswan, Wonderswan Color, CP System, Coleco Vision, Amiga CD32, Scum VM, Odyssey 2, Intellivision, MSX1, Vectrex, TurboGrafx-16, TurboGrafx-CD, NEC Super Graphics, Game & Watch, uh, NES, Game Boy, Super Nintendo, Virtual Boy, Nintendo 64, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance, Panasonic 3DO, Opon BOR, Atomis Wave, SG-1000, Master System, Game Gear, Sega Genesis or Mega Drive, Genesis 32X, Sega CD, Sega Saturn, Dreamcast, Naomi, 
Neo Geo CD, Neo Geo, Neo Geo Pocket, Neo Geo Pocket Color, PlayStation, PSP, then we have the game collections, Art of Fighting, Batman, Bleach, Captain Tsubasa, Castlevania, Crash Bandicoot, Donkey Kong, Double Dragon, Dragon Ball Z, Fatal Fury, Final Fantasy, Final Fight, GTA, Harry Potter, Kirby, The King of Fighters, Super Mario, Mega Man, Metal Slug, Metroid, Mortal Kombat, Naruto, One Piece, Pokemon, Samurai Showdown, Sonic, Street Fighter, Tomb Raider, Turtles, Zelda, then two player games, four player games, then all of the games which is 10,000 games, favorites which is a custom game list which you can create and then last played. Okay, so the first system we have is the Nintendo DS. This is Mario Kart DS. And obviously you can't use touchscreen controls, but this game really doesn't need it. And as you can see, the game is running perfectly fine. Next up we have Alien vs Predator from the uh, CPS system or CPS1 and at the time I must say this game was amazing, a lot of fun, you can also play two players and it's just yeah nostalgia and you can see the game is running perfect so this is one of the games I recommend you play. So next up we have Super Mario World, classic game and I just want to mention a quick function is that if you hold select and R1 it will save state and if you press select and L1 it will load the save state. This is quite convenient for games where you can't save where you want to. So up next we have Nintendo 64, this is The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time which is arguably one of the greatest games to be ever made and so far on my testing this game runs flawlessly and it is definitely one of the games you must play even if you've played it back in the days. Next up is GoldenEye 007, there are some slowdowns as you can tell from the audio and it does tend to slow down in some of the cutscenes but other than that it is somewhat quite playable as you can see here.
Moving on to Sega Dreamcast and this is Sonic Adventure 2 and from what I've played so far I would say in terms of speed it's about 90% but it is very playable as you can see here. I haven't noticed any audio stuttering and the game performs fine and if you haven't played this game definitely do try it out. Next is Marvel vs Capcom 2, again this is considered one of the greatest 2D fighting games to be made and it is actually still played to this day. So from what I've noticed so far this game in terms of speed is playing up at 95% to 100% speed, I haven't noticed any kind of lag or input drops. So yeah this game is very fun to play, 3 on 3 tag team beat em up, if you've played Street Fighter games before you'll get easily accustomed to this game. Here we have the Sony PlayStation, this is Crash Bandicoot 3, I've not really played this game but from what I've played here it appears to be full speed, I've not noticed any kind of frame drops at any point. Then we have the PlayStation Portable, the PSP. This game is Bleach, it's in Japanese, I'm not sure if it saw an international release. This game is not running at full speed, you'll probably notice the slowdown but from what I've played it is very playable. Okay so that should wrap it up for this video and I do hope you found it useful. So my time with this retro console I did find it to be quite good. The control pad for fighting games it is very decent, I was able to pull off special moves. Now I also want to mention that some games they were forced in French, I couldn't find a way to change it to English. Maybe there is a way to change it to English but I haven't noticed it myself so do bear that in mind. Also you will need a power adapter converter if you're in the UK as it only comes with a 2 pin plug. Now if you want to buy this retro console I will leave a link in the description. So if you found the video useful please give it a thumbs up. If you are new here then please subscribe if you haven't already as I have more videos coming up. So make sure you hit that bell icon so you get notified as soon as I release my videos. Please do follow me on Twitter and Instagram and like always. Thanks for watching and I will catch up with you in the next video.